how's it going? My name is Tanmay and with me is Kamba. Kamba, say hello. Hello. And uh, this is the pilot episode. Kamba, this is the pilot episode. Yes, absolutely. Of uh, All India Bakchod, which is the really random name that we've given our podcast. Kamba, why are we calling it this? Uh, this is uh, the most random name we could come up <laughs> with, and it's uh, to give you a touch of. Retro nostalgia <laughs> as we talk about contemporary issues that are plaguing the nation in this 21st century. <laughs> right, right, right. So essentially what's going to happen in this episode is uh, we're just going to talk about random things that happened in the, in the last week. Uh, hopefully discuss the comedy scene as well because since Kamba and me are both comics and get a guest on the show if we can, if somebody is willing to come. Exactly. And uh, hopefully uh, if you if you guys hear this, please do give us feedback at the end of the episode. This is our first episode. It's a pilot episode. A uh, lot will change over, over, over time, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it a uh, uh, fair number of times. And hopefully, I will stop saying fucking hopefully. Yes. And uh, <laughs> on that note, uh, we must uh, caution you that there is a fair bit of cussing There's on this bit, episode. Yes. So if you have your kids around you, don't worry. They probably already know the <laughs> no, words. Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, a, there's a lot of fucks. There's a lot of uh, fucking... Uh, there's, <laughs> there's there's a couple of bakchods already. <laughs> already. So so yeah. So so let's let's begin. What 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 happened last week, Kamba? Let's begin uh, with the most interesting of them all: the IIT sperm story. <laughs> Why are you sounding so serious? I just masturbated. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So the IIT sperm story. Apparently, a couple put an ad in the papers saying that they would like uh, sperms of an IIT an IIT donor. Uh, somebody who's uh, intelligent, smart, healthy, with no bad habits. Also tall and fair. Also, <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen anyone tall and fair in IIT? And it was from IIT Madras. Sorry, being a racist asshole. Yeah. But, <laughs> but listen, please. And I think uh, to be... <clears throat> why the like fuck would you want an IIT and sperm? More importantly, if you... To be fair, if you want fucking sperm, IITians would be the way to go. Who the fuck is... Who else is... No, fun? like, then you will have to extract it out of their fucking keyboards and shit because there'll be, <laughs> there, there will be none left inside their fucking penis, dude. Well, how are you gonna get it? You're like, oh, damn it, just ran out of supply today as well. Fucking five minutes late you came. My point is, how did they reach the figure of 20,000? Like, how do you put the fucking... Which, and in my head, I start doing the maths. So if there are 2 million sperms, okay, it comes down to essentially like 0. 0.003 pesa per, per See, sperm. See, this is why you're an asshole. <laughs> because now you're looking at it in terms of a comic. Oh, I will do 30 minutes. So for 30 minutes, I will charge uh, 30,000. So 1,000 rupees for 1 minute. Are you fucking putting money on sperm? They're in millions. Fuck up millions. But listen. But listen, how will a couple... Why not, for example, why an IIT uh, hmm. sperm, not an IIM sperm? Why not an IIPM sperm? Dude? Why not an why not an Arindam Chaudhary sperm, dude? Dude, you will only get it in like Silchar in Assam. Yes. Fucking, you will have to travel with all sperms. Those. You get like a laptop, shit free with the fucking sperm and like. No man, that's. No, one second, one second. An IIPM sperm is <clears throat> is an all almost as good as an IIM sperm, man. Is almost it's, as good. It's almost that good. Uh, yeah, it's think a, beyond B schools. <laughs> it's a that sperm is number one in global exposure. Global exposure. <laughs> That sperm has seen Shah Rukh Khan perform at every festival yeah. and perform it quiz. Notice how you're not laughing anymore. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Uh, Inside joke, nobody will get nobody it. Will get it. No, no. Yeah. That's wrong. So, yeah. so, but doesn't this doesn't this make you like feel bad as a BMM graduate? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much money will you get Nobody for a beer? Ain't looking for my sperm. How much will you get? Like five bucks? Five bucks, yeah, probably. Like <laughs> That yeah. also will depend, no? From yeah, really, really. Like if I haven't gone for a week, then maybe no. I'll get six bucks for it. Just because for the sheer number <laughs> of sperms. <laughs> Which is still left inside. Yeah. So one more thing that happened this week was quite big, actually. I, I, at, least, I at least followed it okay. in quite detail. Bollywood Gandu account got hacked by a, by a guy called Anon Abignale. What the fuck? Like, you know, that's a little scary in the sense because I there was this rumor which happened like a week before because there was somebody who made like this fake account with the L. In, there was basically an I instead of an L. So you mm. thought it's the same person? Yeah, yeah. Kept spreading news around that I've hacked this account, uh, I've hacked yeah, this account. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, it's a little scary in terms of why... It's it? probably scary for you because you have actual shit in your DMs. Like, if someone hacks my fucking DM, all you'll know is like... Oh, fuck it. Oh, this guy fucking said, hey, how many people are tweeting? Just shit, like really gay shit. Basically, like, just bitching other people just out when they, when they, when they make a dirty tweet. 
just like hey dude why are you fucking saying shit about comics and this it'll just be really emo fucking sad <laughs> fucking tweets that they'll find no but it, but this but i personally when i heard about this i thought this is some like bollywood fucking controversy controversy yeah to get this i yeah. thought arjun rampal was behind but this fucking behind he, this. Just, he was just I, it was maybe like a love to hate you viral like a digital campaign or something like that dude it's a little sad that we're mentioning that show because more people hear about the show now so than have otherwise that. seen <laughs> in its entirety <laughs> fucking nobody has seen that show it was a really funny thing so essentially the show format is very simple hmm. um This fucking Haiti comes and just says sh- the hater comes. I can't get over the fact that you're Haiti. So hater comes and just says shit. Huh. And then at the end of the episode, this, they do a activity where they bond. And here's the best part, okay? When the Shishan hater came on the show, there was a Shishan hater. There was a Shishan hater, okay? Who? Which is I thought there'll be like 50 people on it, but there's just one guy. <laughs> but there was a Shishan hater on the show, huh. and their activity to bond was they played cricket. But when Vinod Kamli's hater came on the show, huh. their activity was dancing. <laughs> And I was like, these both are cricketers. They both played for India, but one is like both of them cry like little bitches, little bitches exactly. <laughs> at the drop of at the drop yeah, of hat. The, but it's a little sad, yeah. It, it, the difference is that Vinod Kamli has a super hot wife, so we mm. can't fucking. So he is like just showing everybody the finger. He's like, fuck you. You thought I cried? That emo bullshit got me this hot wife because she connected with me on an emotional level. level. That, that was some bullshit. And besides that, Sachin never did anything for me. Yeah, like you don't understand. <laughs> So, That's just ridiculous. So, no. so Bollywood gun. Yeah, but what? Like, did it scare you when it happened? Because, like, I got scared in the sense that anyone, anyone's account can be just yeah. fucking hacked it, so easily. It scared it. It scared me a little bit, hmm. but more than scared, I was just fucking pissed off. I was pissed off that this guy had not just hacked the account. And, like sometimes, like if it was, then my first thought, yeah. well, like you said, you thought it was a film controversy. Yeah. My first instinct was, this is definitely not done by a film star because. Honestly, if it if it was a film star who fucking got someone to fucking hack it, it would have been hacked, it would have been done for, and it would have been ended there. But this fucker went on to say, "Hey guys, so check it out. So I fucking hacked this account. I am saving Bollywood." And just when that those sort type of tweet came out, I was like, "This is just some fucker doing this for some fucking saving attention." Saving Bollywood. Who the fuck saving, needs to save, save Bollywood? Bollywood. Bollywood has destroyed the fabric of fucking your culture. Everything is fucking Bollywood. The modeling industry, they destroyed. What's sort of this is like a, the most niche superhero ever? Like, <laughs> just the most niche superhero. Like, hey, hey, Katrina, I'm going to save you from this one guy who's tweeting to you from a from his own house. Aren't you fucking glad? Yeah, she lived with fucking Salman Khan in his house for one year. Yeah. He could have run over her with his SUV whenever he no, wanted. No, no, but they need saving from this one fucking tweeter. Like, but it was so. Are you? But the, the fun. But it was really cool that in three days, what? Who are you? Yeah, that fucking, was very dude, cool. Dude, managed to get the account back. That, that was, was fucking hilarious. Cool. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I have to say this. Like I, I gen, I really, f- I, f- I fucking love Bollywood Gandu. I think he's fucking hilarious. He's damn funny. I, I feel like the essence of Gandu <laughs> has been really captured by Bollywood Gandu. Like he, like if you, his name is not Bollywood nice guy. His name is not Bollywood bitch or his, his name is Gandu. That's what a Gandu does. At any point, he's like, like you know what? If you're having a conversation, if you just fucking come out and say, hey, by the way, do you know fucking I got this movie out? Huh. Only a Gandu will turn around, turn that statement against you, and say, oh, but you fucking can't act. And your first response is. I feel like Bollywood Gandu generally captured the essence of Gandu. So anyway, so uh, to continue on the Bollywood Gandu bit, mm-hmm. another thing I've noticed a lot of people now saying, "Oh man," and I've noticed there's a lot of people, "Oh man, he's not funny anymore." What do you think about this? Because I I get really pissed off when people use this phrase. Look, not all Gandus are funny. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a Gandu no, can just be a fucking fuck Gandu. Gandu. Yeah, like he doesn't have to beat be... the shit out of him. Yeah. And there's a lot of people like that we know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's so eventually, uh, even after uh, apparently that I was I was following the fucking timeline, I was saying that that Anand Abigail eventually had a conversation with Cricket Gandu uh, oh, okay. on Twitter. Yeah, so I'm I'm assuming that there's the same fucking account or whatever. I hope so. I don't uh, know. Whatever, yeah. but whoever the account got back. No, so and any, the best thing is after the account got back, just started doing the same shit as so if nothing yeah, happened. As just nothing fucking happened. around, okay, which I thought happened. was fucking genius yeah. and fucking hilarious. Yeah, and man. I, did days. you see all the blog posts? I whoever this fucking guy is running Bollywood, no, no, I think he's fucking hilarious because all the the first thing that he did, if you followed the entire. Saga, I, I, I noticed some of it. Yeah. No, Not where where the second uh, the account got hacked? Hmm. Okay, uh, whoever this Bollywood Gandu is. He or she still had access to the account from their mobile device or whatever. Oh, a third okay. Party oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And Bollywood Gandu, I find this so fucking hilarious. The first tweet that he made was, uh, "My penis is so small that I actually pee on my balls." <laughs> like quote and an epic nail, which I thought was again when I read it, I was like, "What a fucking Gandu!" Like yeah. this is what a Gandu, Gandu would do. do. Not like coming on the this thing like, "Who the fuck okay, is I can know?" Like, account. "Hey, tera tera lunch hota hai." Like it's it's actually that. That's what I fucking love about Gandu. That was very funny. Yeah. That was fucking hilarious. But Even are you are you going to be careful now with your account? 
uh yeah i i actually i had this one i get very scared i'm a fucking noob that way like whenever i get these links mm. from fucking these phishing links or whatever yeah. if i click a link and i feel like this is fucking fishy i have a very noob response to it like i will restart my pc and like delete all the icons from my desktop <laughs> and just fucking do weird shit that has got nothing to do are with you are you one of those people if you get like a fake link you think it's just a random woman just sending you pictures of vagina and shit you think no sound like i'm not fucking not that anymore. Anymore. Okay. Oh, man well sorry yeah not not yeah, anymore i shouldn't have let that out <laughs> <laughs> this is totally backfired shit <laughs> <laughs> anyway don't tell me those links again man <laughs> fucking ridiculous uh, just in case i get hacked come come up <laughs> <laughs> is that your response <laughs> that is my response okay whatever mm. okay let's move on let's so go. did you hear oh pravin freeze come into india <laughs> uh, i read a story today that said that the bachans are supposed to play host to opera and i said the funniest fucking tweet that that jain made i thought it was just fucking hilarious so in case those who missed the tweet the tweet was essentially a uh, जब जब भारत में आम आदमी के बच्चे पैदा होते तब हिजड़े लोग आते हैं उसे देखने के लिए जब बच्चन के बच्चे पैदा हुए तो ओपरा बिन आ रही है उसे देखने के लिए and that was ridiculous yeah. because he yeah. had to just basically buy over the whole fucking floor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and then 5 minutes after the baby was born they're having like a party and shit and like <laughs> rap music is playing in the back and ek like, mai aur yeah. ek tu hai <laughs> <laughs> fuck off what is your take on this women becoming mothers and then not getting those roles and shit do you think it'll affect ashwara rai Why am I asking such a heavy question? <laughs> I have no fucking idea why I'm asking that. And, and, and the sad part is, in my head, my first response was fucking good for Karina, man. I don't fucking know. <laughs> good for Karina, dude. Whatever she got the book. No, like also from Ashwarya's perspective, hmm. like it must have been such a dilemma. Like, <clears throat> like, uh, like the two sides of it is: Do I want a baby or do I want to do this Madhur Bandarkar film? <laughs> Essentially, that. Which of these do I need more badly? Yeah. <clears throat> in life right now. But do you think like after that Karina Kapoor is getting grief? Or well, like actually Saif Ali Khan already getting grief, no? From yeah, Kari. yeah. Bencho Abhishek ne bhi kar liya. Kar liya. Toh hi baitha hua hai. Bhai tattoo kara raha hai. Bencho bachche ne nikal rahe hai. Tattoo kara hi jao. Itna chota nama pe tera malam. Oh God. Very bad. You think Saif Ali Khan went and painted the baby's room? It Abhishek ko just like do like the market. Him and Saif Ali Khan just doing this thing. You don't make fun of Saif Ali Khan, man. She was dating Konal Khemu for fuck's sake. That's a joke in itself. She wasn't. It. She's still dating him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little sad. <laughs> actually, actually, I feel bad for that the most. I don't know why. I don't know who I feel bad for more, more bad for. Like, I I don't know. I used no. Actually, I never thought she was hot. I always thought the I nose was. She was cute or whatever. She was cute, but the nose would always get yeah, in the, the way. Yeah, the nose would always get in the way. Like true. it's only it's probably the only nose where if you want to like kiss her, it's already at a fucking angle. Yeah, it's the so anti Voldemort nose essentially. It's the anti Voldemort. <laughs> Mm, <laughs> Aunty, oh fuck! This is a bad pun. Yeah, turning into Ramesh. We just met our intern. But I'm just going to say something that's that's really horrible, yeah. But a little part of me wants to know what the baby looks. <laughs> really? Why the fuck do you care? Just I don't know you why. Think, There's no, just a little part of me. You're like, like, what? No, the thought comes from, yeah. What are you hiding? <laughs> it's that. Like, what, what the fuck are you hiding? Like, it's that. So what were we talking about? Uh, Oprah, Oprah, oh, Oprah yeah, is what, coming. What the fuck happened to Oprah? What uh, what is she coming to the lit fest for? Like, uh, has she come out with the book now, or what is it? No, I think they were just trying to get her for a couple of years. The thing is, when I don't know, okay, it's a little embarrassing that I know this, but uh -huh. Oprah, when she had her show in the US, she had this thing called the Oprah Angels Network and shit like that, and she uh -huh. was one of the people who ran the Oprah Book Club. So correct, every correct. week, basically, if you got a recommendation from Oprah. You basically had like a fuckload. Everyone gets a recommendation. <laughs> you get a recommendation. You, you get, get a recommendation. recommendation. You get a book. <laughs> you, you get, get five book. recommendations. <laughs> Can you? But that's the thing, though. No, that she made reading popular. Basically, she was basically that's the astounding. She made read. She's like the Chetan Bhagat of America. Basically, basically. that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> so she made. She, so it was a big deal. So I think they must be trying to get her. Maybe I don't know what the philosophy of the lit fest is, but if they're getting fucking couples able to recite his poetry. That's <laughs> <laughs> do couple, do couple wrote a book of poetry. I was so happy when they said the Akash tablet project is destroyed. That was I'm fucking like, yes! hilarious. I was like, yeah. yeah. But it's ridiculous because a lot of people are still getting those tabs. So like, I think I'll buy it for like. Because Kari lete na yar. Pachcha saar pe kai. One million like, indigo, yeah. Might it's essentially that. Okay, I can't afford that. <laughs> but uh, posh comic and shit like that. It's not. But right. no, but twenty five hundred bucks, man. You use it as a coaster of fucking like one MP three player. Yeah. You just give it to like. A kid. No, but I, I read this thing yesterday saying uh, one of the reasons why it was shelved is because the company that was making it, 
like they wanted the processor to get faster and shit and the company yeah, yeah. was making it was yeah it went from 366 megahertz <laughs> to, to 760 ooh, ooh fucking wow fuck. now i'll do my calculations way faster, way faster oh, man din mein sirf teen bar hang hogi char ki jagah wow this Dude, is amazing the, the fucked up thing is after they sent 21 websites huh. it, and those are basically all the websites any indian fucking accesses anyway if huh. you take away google huh. facebook और कोड भेंचोत करेगा क्या वो टैबलेट का व्हाट इज ही गोइंग टू कनेक्ट टू द इंटरनेट एंड डू व्हाट एल्स इज ही गोइंग टू डू दोस आर 21 वेबसाइट्स बट याहू फकिंग मैसेंजर्स ब्लॉक्ड एंड शिट डू वन मोर थिंग दैट आई रेड वाज वन ऑफ द अदर रीजंस व्हाई दे दिस थिंग समथिंग अबाउट रिलायंस गेटिंग द 4G स्पेक्ट्रम हियर एंड रिलायंस इज गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस देयर ओन टैबलेट्स व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी ऑलमोस्ट एज चीप एज 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 आकाश बट देन वी ऑलरेडी लिसन दैट टू कंपनीज स्टार्टर्स इन रिलायंस ऑलरेडी कंबाइंड आवर लाइक सम 5% ऑफ आवर जीडीपी डू That's this entire two very groups so technically you already sold they control your fucking oil yeah, they can do half your everything. uranium they can do whatever fuck they want you think 2500 2500 rupees ki tablet nahi nikal sakte wo they'll they'll count it yeah just i'm just like how much more do you want to empower farmers is all my question is to relance dude farmers have fucking like yeah what is what are you going to give them a tablet for <laughs> they don't need tablet they have fucking 10 tons of grain fucking rotting there you don't pick that up is fucking Basically, lying around if you think about relance is, tablet le lo <laughs> relance is the anti apple like it's actually the anti apple like jo apple kar raha uska exactly they're doing the exact opposite we're owning a tablet at one point used to be cool i'm fucking like socially elite or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's like acha yo socially elite sabka paisa apna whatever kar lo duniya mutti mein mother cho they are fucking take this tablet <laughs> no they're assholes you know why they're assholes because now with the fucking cost with the tablet he can actually now see what the actual price of the grain he should be getting and is not getting <laughs> <laughs> like bencho 10 ton pada hua hai abhi i can't just get one sure. t- just like track shot of like one camera going up from a hut and just that guy going sir help <laughs> <laughs> yeah with the, you remember the jerry seinfeld chart jerry <laughs> yeah they said she that like, <laughs> basically shut so, up di- it's a little depressing and that's not my fun fucking dying and shit yeah, it's ridiculous really sad, yeah sad. take a one minute yeah, silence one for, minute that. for that please Bencho so anyways to- opra <laughs> <laughs> actually maybe opra can do something for farmers yeah maybe just buy everyone a new farm do <laughs> or a new cow <clears throat> right so one of the things that happened last week was the top gear thing where uh, have you seen the episode the top gear the obviously like episode. every other fucker i streamed it illegally <laughs> online uh-huh. did you find the actual act offensive for Not example thing. the car the uh, the toilet seat in the car in terms of It was a, the joke was basically that everybody comes to India gets the runs. Really not. I didn't find because it, it's also very true on some huh, level. It is, it's it very, is very true. true on some level. Yeah. Like, and we may, and the thing is we are assholes about it. Every time a Firang comes and has a bad stomach, like ha, bencho khaliyo ki dal iski patgaya. No, it was really funny because I was I I was watching that. Okay, and mom was cooking dinner. Okay, <laughs> and my first thought was like you know if fucking Jeremy ate my what my mom's cooking right now. <laughs> that's disgusting. Are you dissing your mom? <laughs> In front of other people, no, but that's it. Our food is spicy, man. White people yeah, don't fucking is, adjust to it. It's true. like when they come down to India, okay, and they fucking go to these beaches, and they are pink. All right, yeah. they, if they turn around to say we are fucking pink, I won't be like, how dare you fucking yeah. say this about my country? The sun in my country is worse than the sun, the sun in your, in your country. country. Huh. It's essentially that, but they can't handle it, so they can't handle it. No, but I think no, I don't think that was offensive. No, people got offended of the fact that they went took the car around through slums and shit. Yeah. Which you know, which is weird because I'm now, sorry, but if you drive for half an hour in Bombay, at some point you will be driving through a fucking slum. That is also true. Yeah. I was actually fucking surprised. Like, which slum even has these roads where they manage <laughs> to fucking take a Jaguar <laughs> through? No, but it like I think there's a pattern. Like for if we, if the thing is, you every Indian wants a Firang to come down and validate our existence. I think yeah, it's still that. It's so that. every Firang when it comes down, a journalist will ask three questions. Huh. What do you think about the women? You better fucking say that a woman, woman are beautiful, beautiful and Indian. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about your our food? Oh, it's the tastiest food. I fucking order yeah. it from takeout yeah. all the time, everywhere. Yeah. Chicken tikka masala is awesome. I love, I love the spices huh. that it's huh. so colorful and it's I, so nice. Yeah, every if another Firang uses the word diversity and vibrance, now I will slap <laughs> the shit out of the <laughs> mancho. The same two fucking words every time. It's so diverse. There's so many colors. Oh my god, what the fuck? Never met one Firang who's fucking genuinely came and said, "Listen, you guys are fucking economically powerful and shit, but get your fucking act together, you guys. I want one guy to just come and say that out loud." No, a lot of people say that. We don't take them seriously. Yeah, that's true. For example, you have the IMF and shit like that. But obviously, those are other different mm. types of institutions. Mm. But you have a lot of people who say that. Yeah, 
it's not a big deal but of I course india will now india has the balls to now say hey, how can the us say this have you looked at your own poverty look at fucking after hurricane katrina you take care of your black people no i you know what disappointed me about that episode they had to do a dabba wala sequence na of course everyone will to. fucking come to of bombay to do a dabba wala sequence to be na. fair that was a good fuck it was it was that was a funny sequence it was a funny sequence that was a funny it was really sequence. funny it was just to bad. watch jeremy take out his dick here dal wagera spill ho raha hai wahan pe and all the dabba wala sa coming say chutiya kya kiya tune this that no sharma ji darting hai mere ko bhojri ke kya hai ye this that no Dude, it was the only. I think it was outside church gate. It was the only. Episode, yeah. It was the only Top Gear special ever where you have like fifty people who don't know who the fuck, fuck these people are. Yeah. But yeah, shooting over here, shooting over here. Shooting over here, shooting over here. 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 So I just want to know if those people fucking went up to these British producer when when it's uh, coming on TV. Yeah, yeah. But do you think they even remember BBC? I don't. I don't think so. They do. They must be like, I see colors. के बाजू में आती है कौन सी है BBC? क्या है मैं Star Plus और colors लगाऊँ तो उनके बीच में किधर आ जाएगी क्या? All right. So anyways, uh, that's it for that. Let's move on. Let's move on. What's the next agenda on hand? Right. So uh, since, since Mr. Khamba, you also are a comic. Oh well, no. I don't think a lot of people will believe that. No, yeah, too. That's actually funny, nii, yar. Kya karega? Ha, yeah. It's a little. It's not. Yeah, the things are not working out, yeah. man. So, yeah. uh, one of the things that uh, me and Kamba both decided was that when we're going to do this podcast, is we are also going to talk a lot about this. Uh, hopefully, uh, talk a lot about the scene and get, actually get people who are doing great shit on the scene to come and talk. And one of our first guests today is a good friend of mine. Is doing great stuff for uh, for absolutely. The scene. His name is Mr. Karan Talwar, who runs this super Woo-hoo! property. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Karan Talwar is yeah. here. Hello. He runs this super. Who is prop- stoned as shit, by yeah. the way? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's very professional. He's yeah, actually he's wearing pants and a fucking yeah. suit and shit. You won't, you'll never believe that this fucker is stoned, even though his property is called shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really unbelievable. What so the yeah, name? Uh, the name's unbelievable. I think I think the name's quite funny. I actually, love, how, how did you come up with the, the name, name of the property? Shits and giggles. The name actually comes from a movie called Beer Fest. Ah, I actually have I've seen, seen that I've movie. Seen, they have the beer, beer tavern. Yeah, yeah. it's all shit. The beer, the beer is called shits, and the the tavern is called, called shits. G- and ah, yeah. lovely, shits and lovely. I think it's a great name. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic name. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make this promo because nobody can pronounce it. But yeah. I'm just gonna make, have the the name on a billboard. I'm gonna go to national college or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna hey, make, say sh- the name. Say the name. Ishitski. Ishitski. Shit. Yeah, but but actually that's true. There's a lot of times that happened like with friends because I've gigged with him for a couple of times, hmm. and a lot of people are like, "Acha, so what are you doing that?" Shaitan uh, Gaigal, Sh- like it no, sounds no, German. No no, 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 like the last one in December, November was at the Taj. Okay, so hmm. everybody wants to. So what's that? Shh. Are Taj wala? Yeah, Taj wala. Nobody can pronounce the name. Uh, no, what's funny? What's funny? I was doing a gig uh, recently at the at the store, and Raj- Rajneesh was there. Rajneesh huh. Kapoor, huh. and he said, "I refuse to say that name." He's like, "Yeah, I refuse to say that name." Which, if any of any of you know Rajneesh, you'll know exactly why. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, but if you don't, then <laughs> if you don't, you missed out. Is not <laughs> okay, so but let's move on to the uh, questions again. When did you decide to uh, create this property, and why? Uh, we started doing open mics um, about a year and a half ago. And there was just one a month. That mm. was the Bombay Electric mm. Project one. Mm. That was the only one. And uh, did like these you know small spots at the open store uh, at the comedy store, mm. open spots. But that's it. There was nothing else going on as mm. far as comedy mm. was concerned. Mm. Um, Tanmay, you were doing some stuff, mm. but there's a handful, of five people doing yeah. any comedy and yeah, very, very, very limited. Very, very very limited. limited yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go up to bars and tell them, hey, I'm gonna invite all the open micers, get mm. them all together. We, we'll do a show for you. Yeah. But how? But how easy was it for you to like convince bars and? Uh well uh, luckily we, I knew someone at Tian so Tian was easy mm-hmm. and then I just went into Zenzi met the owner he was cool about it and it was actually pretty easy to get started mm-hmm. and so we did one show at Tian and one show and the Zenzi. accent obviously helps the accent <laughs> the your accent man the american accent the american accent hey i'm doing this comedy man yo, i'm doing yo, comedy yo, 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 yo boys <laughs> Shut up. What the fuck is that accent? Yeah. What the is that southern accent? drive my pickup truck. <laughs> Y'all. <Southern accent. laughs> I live in Texas, man. No, but it was easy. So then it wasn't a problem for you to be able to get like spots and stuff. No, no. And uh, there was a lot of people who were like dying to do comedy. They just wanted a stage, wanted a mic. Hmm. That was the best part. That was the, that was the easiest part to getting people on stage. Like literally, how many times have I said it's full? It's full to you, Tanmay. Yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. It, 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 because people are like lying. That's up. the only thing you've told me, but bastard. 
Eighth Feb. <laughs> Fuck, I just told him eighth Feb. <laughs> no, but okay. So let's go from that. So do you think, for example, from uh, what it was now, have other bars started approaching you themselves? Yes. Yeah. Has that been yes. a progression? Yeah. There are a lot of bars. There's a lot of interest. Everybody wants to do it. Honestly. How have you personally progressed, mm-hmm. uh, you think, as a comic from, because now you're doing the store and now you're going to do local heroes pretty soon. How yeah. has like it been for you uh, from doing open mics to the stage where you're at now? Uh, let's say I was, I was, I improved, of course. I'm improved. Uh, everybody has. It's yeah, so, so, everyone. It's, it's, but, 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 but it's, it's like honestly night and day from where I've come in the last you know, year or so. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, this, the, you know, this going on, going on stage and talking to people you don't know is one of the scariest things for most people. Mm. Sure. It takes time. You know, some people takes no time. You know, mm. like Varun Thakur, man, that guy just goes yeah. on and rips it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, other people like, I, it took some time for me to slow down and, you know, just learn those Because, you know, people couldn't get your accent that easily. <laughs> Yes, it was my accent that was the issue. <laughs> but no, it's, it's it's been amazing, and yeah, it's given me a great a great platform to like keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing, it, keep getting mm. better. Mm. You know, so working at it. Have you seen uh, Have you seen other comics improve or change uh, yeah, over this I'm period sure as well? Because Karan's one guy who's probably seen the most number of yeah, comics, most number of comics very regu- on a very on regular, regular basis, because yeah. not just outside but also yeah. who've gone through his platform. His platform, yeah. So a very yeah. unique yeah. position to be in. I think yeah. I think I've seen one. The I got to say the one guy I've seen who's become. Who's good to like awesome was Anupam Pal is, is Anupam Pal. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I think he's one of the best. I comics think he's probably, probably the best comic. favorite comics ever. Yeah. When I saw him uh, at the at the open mic, when he was the first one at the comedy store, and, yeah. and uh, then I saw him recently, like yeah. night and day, man, it's amazing. He's, he's fantastic. This, yeah, he's absolutely. Now that so he's, I think he's like um, you know setting some benchmarks as far as what you can do. Yeah, you know, so there is some, somebody who, who actually did the Shitsin Gills went through the Shitsin Gills pr- platform, man. Like you, you are constantly gigging with uh, who? Who? Who all are you gigging with? Can you just mention. Yeah, who all's in the shit? Who all's in the shit? Oh, there's too. quite a few names. Uh, there's uh, Varun Thakur. Varun Thakur, Bridge correct. Bhakta. Uh, Varun Thakur is IR Vaboon on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bridge, bridge ba- is a bridge too far. Current, so what? What benchmarks like or what uh, targets? Do you have any targets set for yourself in terms of where you want to take shits and giggles as a property and where you want to go as a personal comic, like individually? Uh, well, I mean, that's a that's a good question because. Honestly, I see uh, trouble in the future for stand-up as it grows. Because at Why? Some, because at some point, stand-up is going to clash with mainstream. Stand-up is not mainstream right now. What? Absolutely not. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Yeah. So, we're going to grow. We're going to grow. There's no. It, it's just ha- it has to happen. People need alternative entertainment. It's just, you, you go to the movies, you go to the nightclub. What else are you doing? There's nothing else to do. And that was Baba Talwar's story. No, but it's actually true. But it's important for a stand-up to do comedy that he or she like feels about, course, you know, course, and, 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 and sometimes, you know, like if you're talking about things that, you know, that are specific. Of course. Uh, sure. It, won't, it may, may not reach a mass audience, but I think that's important. Yeah. You, do, you do things that you, you actually feel about instead of doing it for the. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's one of the few spaces left where which you can even actually, you can actually do it. Yeah. Actually, Karan, yeah. I want to ask you uh, just more personal question in terms of your comedy thing. Which is the be- Can you stop yawning, Tanmay? Come on, man. There's a third yawn now. It's ridiculous. Fucking one in the morning, sorry. Uh, so, which is the best, for example, gig you think you've had? Which is the best place you've liked to play? And which is the worst fucking experience you've had? Because everybody had like a horror st- story. <laughs> how bad a gig has gone and shit. Uh, the best, the best one. Karan Singh is so long. There have been so many, Karan. <laughs> the best one. Yeah, there have been lots of good ones. There have been lots of bad ones. Uh, I think the best one was the one where, where we gigged with actually Khamba at Ontos. Where, uh, oh. <laughs> where this chick, uh, we were doing our show and like there was, there was this table in the middle of the, of the venue who just would not shut up. They just kept on going and, uh, and, and they started, and they started this. like sort of an argument started with all of, all of us comics, you know, one by one. And we got to Kamba, Kamba mm. gets on stage and, and he, st- he starts ripping into them mm. and things just go from bad to worse. And mm. it was the craziest night. We ended up on stage. I think I think by the end of it, three of us was just so drunk we were stealing the mic from each other, saying, "Hey, I'm making jokes, not on, I'm making jokes, not on, I'm making jokes, not on." Give up, funny, give up, funny. Kamba basically went nationalist on their nationalist on their ass, going like, "Aise koi karte, desh aise badlega koi." Fuck off, desh. He was fucking on, and somebody had to say that shit. No, but it was a fun show. That was a fun show. Which is the worst gig, like in terms of where you've been, like what the fuck? Uh, the worst gig was pretty much all the private gigs. Well, like you mean corporate shows? Co- the corporate shows. I think the worst one was like the wedding. This, uh, where oh man, you did, did a wedding. Uh, oh. so like the Akshay Kumar of the, comedy, the, man. I, actually, I, 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 miss, I did a wedding, which was, which was okay because they were all drunk. This was actually someone's birthday in Pune. Ah, uh, I heard about this. Yeah, and it was bad. It was really lame. Uh, everybody was just like, hello, hello, how are you? Kaise ho? Nobody was even paying attention to us. And mm. it, doing comedy, that that is the hardest thing, you know, 
like when nobody paying attention yeah, yeah. When, you, when you have three people looking at you and they want to kind of look away mm. you know you are really and but no. that's no daily for me like good thing good thing but but did they pay well yeah i paid really well which that's, is that's exactly. all that matters like, then then like, i fuck it i'll buy an ipad at the end of the call Okay. Right. Uh, so just before we wrap up, uh, Karan, quick plug-in. When's the next Shits and Giggles happening? The next Shits and Giggles show is at Bistro Grill on February 25th. We got Khamba right here. Woo-hoo. Varun Grover. Hmm. We got Sapan Varma. Hmm. I'll be there and Varun Thakur. So that'll That's be a fun awesome. show. So That's all awesome. of you guys who are listening, hopefully, come to that. Hopefully this podcast will be out before that. Of course it will. We'll just uh, edit it. <laughs> yes, Bistro Grill, Feb 25th. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Go for that. And there's, I'm going to do my own plug-in. uh weird ass show at the mehboob mehboob studio recording studio uh, all of your ass is there so please come watch that anything else anything is come any more shows no that's it we will like to thank uh, karan talwa for coming in such late night for recording this yes. uh, segment and, and, with and us such you, you guys are amazing host by the way <laughs> I, i i enjoyed my time but we will do a much longer interview with like and yes. go more in depth into the yes. state of comedy yes. we'll do a talking funny <laughs> indian <laughs> comics version <laughs> sitting on a cock as i'm gay <laughs> by the way by the way khamba and i are sharing the same mic which is why yeah just uh, both there's an awkward happy by the <laughs> there's an awkward moment by the way where every time khamba and karan laugh i'm just waiting like their lips will touch <laughs> Okay. So yeah, uh, see you guys. Uh, yeah. So yeah, see you. Basically. Yeah. See yeah. you guys. See you guys. See and guys on that gay note, bye. And yeah. thanks for thanks for tuning. <laughs> in. Thanks for tuning in. And cue music. This podcast was recorded at Iron Day Studio. Check him out on Facebook at Medico Studios. Check him out on Facebook. See you guys next time. <laughs>